New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the morning, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, give it up. Lakeith Stanfield on the program. Thank I got to say we're honored to have you. I know you don't, you know, from what I know, I don't think you love the interview scenario too much as a part of the work that you do. Am I right? That's whatever, you know, it's part of the job. It's part of the cool job. Is. You don't love it. That's all right. That's you, all right. you gave us one of the most memorable. It depends on who I'm talking to. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll one respond. of the most memorable sneaker shoppings of all time. Oh yeah, the, the, sh- the shoeless, the shoeless sneaker shopping. Was, oh god, yeah. I loved. I was that was what I really at that point. I guess my it, I, it was really Atlanta <clears throat> and maybe Get Out that I had piqued my attention. And when I saw that, it it, it interested me in in Lakeith Stanfield, the guy. Oh really? Who, who now you have so many things, man. It, it's rolling. Obviously, here you're here for the photograph. With Issa Rae, which is Black amazing, Love, which is Black Love, Black story. Love story. Oh God! This is more one of your. Uh, what I was telling you before we started talking on camera, probably the <clears> most <throat> straight ahead kind of film that we've seen uh, you in un- so far. And Uncut Gems is pretty. Straight oh, and ahead. Uncut Gems, yeah, Uncut Gems, pretty. But nah, Uncut Gems is still a, a quirky film. Yes, true. Mm. But this feels one of the more straight ahead love story. I don't know. I don't know. That's not for me to determine. I don't know. I, I feel like everything I've done is straight ahead. I just feel like it depends on where your head is at. Right. Whether or not it's straight. <laughs> well, come on now. Uh, uh, sorry to bother you. Sorry to bother you was to me a beautiful film. I love it. I saw all the turns and I thought it was a, a unique opportunity to get into filmmaking from a black perspective. Yeah. Where it's okay to to make choices and take chances and do things that are bold and big. And I think that's what Boots did. And uh, the audiences, the audience members who got that, I think stuck I around. That. The ones who didn't were but a little shaken up. Like but either that's way, not, it's cool. It's a unique. Okay, let's use the word unique. Okay. It was a unique film. Yeah, yeah. It was different. It's, right. the, you know, the photograph, a love story, Um, you know, not to give away too much. Um, and it, when, is, when is the photograph out for the people? Valentine's Day. See? Yeah, Valentine's Day. You know what I mean? Beautiful. Great Just day in time. film. Yeah, yeah, it's good for the family. If you want to bring your mama, your dog, your cat, uh, your brother, your sister... Whoever you love, bring them along. And I was I was reading it's been a minute since there's been sort of a, a black love film, of which it felt like in the early two thousands there was a kind of a series of them. And it's sort of there's been a gap there. It's it's nice for people to get, especially with two big stars right now. You and Issa Rae are like, you know, it's a pretty there's a big moment right here for both of you guys. It's it's beautiful and I'm so glad to be a part of it and continuing on what the forefathers behind us had laid down <clears throat> for us to be able to have these kind of stories told, and hopefully it lends uh, sort of uh, inspiration to other people of all different kinds of shapes and sizes to tell their stories about love and anything else, you know. So you're becoming like a, a sex symbol. You're going to be like, you know, sexiest man alive. You're going uh, on your Denzel, you know uh, what I mean? That's what they're to... saying. Uh, <laughs> tell you what, See, you, look, you got the little smile, <laughs> The name Stanfield, the name Stanfield could be that you know guy. Mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my name fitted, Lakeith you're, Stanfield. Hey, yo, your, your name is it. <laughs> your name is it. Sexiest man yeah, alive. Yeah, by the way, it's, 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 it's for... The, that amount of syllables is very good Love for that Keith role. Lucky stands field. That's, yeah. that's sexiest man alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, See I, with the giggle. Look, <laughs> that's is, my radio giggle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, when did the? Uh, what was the first break that started rolling for you? A lot of us didn't really get to know you till Atlanta, but obviously, I'm sure that wasn't the first thing. So, where did it start for you? It started for me at Short Term Twelve. I did in 2008, and it was made into a feature in 2013. I was nominated for Best Actor, which uh, lended uh, sort of my name to the industry, and then everybody started paying attention within the business. And then um, I did The Purge, Anarchy, and several other movies, and then finally um, Atlanta, Get Out, and uh, a couple other things that really kind of made a little splash. Were you able... Did you have a moment when that was happening when you could feel the momentum starting to roll? Like, was it, or was it slower because things are spread out and releases are random? Did it not necessarily feel that way? For me, it always felt the same. I always felt like the same dude I was, you know. Ever since my first movie, people were coming up to me and just, you know, so that frequency has changed a little bit. Like, now that I'm at the airport, it's more people coming up, but it's it's pretty much been the same thing. What do people reference the most when they see you at the airport? Uh, it depends on what airport, but uh, in Atlanta, you know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, they, like here, you know, it's uh, but mo- mostly I think it's Get Out, the thing that people are recognizing the it was most. It's a great documentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great documentary. Get right. I think yeah. it's like the whole world are obsessed with Atlanta, but can you talk about the Teddy Perkins episode? Mm. Because I think that's the one where we all came in here and we were looking at each other like, did you watch Atlanta? Because we could, it, it blew our minds. 
It was crazy. I didn't even know who, like, I was chilling with Donald the night before. He had, like, braids in his hair, chilling. Like, we're talking about the episode. He's like, yo, you excited to meet Teddy? I was like, yeah, it's a crazy, because we had read it. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be a crazy role. He's like, yeah, I'm excited to meet him, too. <laughs> and then the next day, I show uh, I show up, and then there's this, like, strange dude who looks fucking crazy, talking crazy. And I'm interested, and I'm like, who is this dude, you know? So I'm talking to him. He got his whole backdrop down. He's telling me where he's from. He's saying he a big actor. He's been acting for a long time, but I can't find a nigga. Like, I'm searching on everything. I'm like, who is Teddy Perkins, you know? And then, uh, so I'm asking people around the set. I'm like, yo, who is this dude? And then somebody had told me, that no, it's Donald. I was like, what? I was like, what? We just did, like, several takes together, and I was looking at... There was a moment where I was like, is that Donald? But I was like, nah, his eyes ain't blue. He had contacts, so, and, right, right, and he had right. the whole thing, <laughs> the whole get out. And so it blew my mind, you know, it was take after take, and I finally realized it was him, and I was like, yo, I love y'all for that. But I, I was mad at the person for telling me, because I was like, damn, I could have stayed in it. It could have been uh, something special. It was still special, but I like not knowing, actually, but I didn't. I, but I did want to know, so I was asking have there, you, uh, oh, sorry, Demon. I was just gonna say Donald's talent level as I mean, we we met him as childish Gambino, at least I did, and then watching the the progression, right? Um you've been around a lot of talented people, mm. right? I mean, what talk to me about that, like his level, his genius. Like, have you seen somebody that I mean, can do so many things so well? Uh, I, I think there are many, many, many people who are genius, but some people that are allowed to tap into it or know how to tap into it, and some people who don't. And some people that allow themselves the space to tap into it, and he's just tapped into it. And, and once you tap into it, you got to stay the course and realize that your genius is going to cause things to shake up, and people ain't going to understand you, but you just got to keep walking the line, and that's what he's done, and created platforms for other people to do the same. So his genius ain't no surprise to me because, you know, you know, um, everybody has an opportunity to access it. Some people get in their own way. Some people let it let it fly. There's a lot of dope people around that show in general, Swank and, and Stephen Glover, and there's yeah. a lot of different talented people. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the other people <clears throat> that may not be in the forefront who kind of make that whole thing go, and what they bring to the table? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um, I, I'll just say Atlanta is my favorite set to work on. Everyone there feels like family. It's a bit of a coveted situation where we all sort of, in one thought and walking together. And uh, we don't really let outside things uh, come in and, and break up and shake up what we're doing and we believe in it. And we feel like we're doing something new and trailblazing. So I love being there. It's a, it's a gift and an honor for me. You, uh, you seem like someone who always is, uh, you're always paying attention. You're dialed into the world uh, socially, culturally. What's, is there any one thing that you're most on right now that like you're thinking about the most? What's occupying? Keith Stanfield's thoughts right now the most. Oh, man, I'm still trying to shake off this last movie I did with Shaka King, Daniel Kaluuya, uh, about uh, Fred Hampton, his life. Mm. And it was just, it's one of the things I've always wanted to work on, something like that for the, for my people and, you know, from where we come from and what we struggled through and how we got there. And the character I play is uh, <laughs> not not uh, not in line with the things that I believe in and, and care about, which, you know, oftentimes that's what you want to get into to stretch yourself. But... It's been technically very difficult for me, but I feel like for people it'll be um, a treat. You know, I feel like there are more people that are, uh, I'll just say, uh, uh, O'Neill-esque than people that are Fred Hampton-esque. So I want everybody to come out and watch it and, and hopefully What's identify. What's the name of the film? I'm sorry, I missed it. What's the uh, it, it it's untitled now, but it's a Fred Hampton project. So, oh, he, so you're, you're cool. on the other side of Fred Hampton in the film. I am. I play an FBI agent that infiltrates and uh, ends up uh, supplying floor plans to the FBI to get him. Were you were you not geared up at first when you saw your the role? Were you not geared up to play an FBI agent that? Game? I I saw the role and I told Shaka that when I read, it, I was like, "Yo, this is a great script." I cried for like five hours and I was like, "I can't wait to play Fred." And he was like, "Nah, actually." <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, "Damn, uh, man!" It took me a while to, to to really get into it, but I like a challenge. I recognize it as that, and so. Uh, yeah, took it on. Yo, isn't it? Um, you know, Fred Hampton was twenty one. Yeah. When he when the police broke in his home and shot him up. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about like activism in this country and revolution and everything, you know, you you think about Huey. Huey was nineteen when he started. Yeah. Right. Um, are you happy with what you see young black folks doing and and and? The conversations that are happening in the mainstream, you know, you as somebody that's been tapped in for a while. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I feel like, you know, we surviving, continuing pushing, and everybody learning and expanding. 
And I'm happy to see it, you know. We can only do what we do one at a time and, and try to make our strides to make ourselves better. By virtue of doing that, we make the whole collective better, you know. So that's all we can do. Your band, why why is your, your band called the uh, Moors? Moors is, um, I, I had a, a, a time during growing up where I went through a little kind of a shift in consciousness where I was like, I want to get back to roots and I want to get back to where I come from and my people and start studying on it, so... Uh, Moors were, was one of the many civilizations that I came across, uh, which was a beautiful manifestation a while ago of, of black uh, royalty and beauty. And so I wanted, if I was going to name my band anything, for it to have the spirit of ancient civilizations that were, you know, that were great. So Moors was the one I chose. You know, it's, it's a, a lot of people don't know about the Moors when they, you know, uh, ruled Europe and built more universities and built, you know, and educated that region of, of, uh, of the world, right? A lot of people don't know that story, so it's very dope to see that. Do you um, is that black consciousness and being able to tap into that through film? Is that something you hope to be able to continue? Yeah, yeah. I hope in everything I do, there's some sort of um, uh, reflection of the beauty that I see in my people, and and uh, yeah, I just I'm, I'm grateful for the stories that allow me to do so, like the photograph, just you know, illustrate black and its beauty that I know it is, but you know. Ultimately, I want to tell human stories that involve all kinds of things, you know. Just, I, I'm black, so everything I do is going to be black anyway, right. but I want to tell all kinds of stories. I want to tell alien stories, dragon stories, bat stories, rat stories, all kinds of stories. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the one coming up is a bit of a rat story, actually, but, <laughs> but yeah, I want to just include everything and, and be a part of the global conversation. Is it challenging, you know? Is that, that's a big challenge, right? It's tough to be able to, as a black actor, to take on things that just aren't specifically about, because you hear that from actors mm. that are, you know, even with what you see with like, you know, Parasite, which was a great film, yeah. right? It, it automatically goes under this umbrella of being Asian and being South Korean gets almost relegated to, you know, a box in some way. Sure. Even though when you look at the film, the film could take place in anywhere. Technically, it just takes place in, in Korea. Is, that's a, is that a challenge yeah. in Hollywood? Oh, I mean, it's a challenge of life. You know, everybody going to try to put you in boxes and make you what they need you to be in order for them to feel comfortable to have you in the space, you know, and I understand it. Categories is what we do as humans you know, to make ourselves understand and process things. So it makes sense, you know, but uh, I think I'm interested personally in the, in the kinds of art that are interested in breaking boundaries and blurring the lines in between those things because I just find more fruitful things usually come from that. Right. Um... A, f a couple months ago, you came with these uh, with these bars for Charlemagne. Mm. We did a, like a basically a diss record, and I got to tell you, I was <clears> sort <throat> of uh, at, at that time I wasn't familiar with your music, and certainly with you with you rhyming. Mm -hmm. I was actually pretty impressed just with the record in general. I thought it was actually a, a well put together. Oh tune. yeah, that's a throwaway man. It's just like it wasn't even a diss record. Really. So what what was it? What could, how would you explain what you did there? It's a part of a collective of songs I have on my upcoming album called Self Control. It's called Automatic, so obviously it's the part of it that is not concerned with control. So I'm just saying random shit, doing random things. And Charlemagne had uh, made a, a, a video or something that came out, so I was like, okay. Taking a shot at you. He, he, was, he was taking a shot at something you said, I, I believe. Is that mm -hmm. what it was? Right? Yeah, mis misinterpreting what I was saying. And so I, I use it as an opportunity to just play with the thought. So I just put his face as the cover art and released it. You know, it really, really wasn't that It's a that great deep. troll. <laughs> He's got a lot of followers out there. It's a great troll. Yeah, you know, it's, you know. But ultimately, I have no issues with Charlemagne as a human being, as a person. Um, I understand he's doing his job, doing what he do, entertaining. I didn't agree with a lot of the stuff he said, and I haven't agreed with a lot of the things that his platform and others have put out. And that's all I was saying, you know, and, and, and people that understand, understand. So what you, 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 in that vein, you talked about sort of the role of media, black media in particular, but media in general. Um, what are you, what does distress you about what the media is putting forward? Media in general. Most of the people that I mentioned, most of the platforms I mentioned aren't even ran by black people. Mm -hmm. So it's not really black platforms yeah, I'm that's talking true. about. I'm talking about media in general, being responsible, putting out shit that you know has integrity, which I know can be difficult. I don't, I'm not in the, the job, so... I'm not saying that it's easy, but I'm just saying I want to hold these people accountable and, like, the shit you put out, you know? Put out a little bit more positivity with the negative. That's all. That's all I was saying. I, I would say in, de in defense, a lot of the things that tend to move around mm -hmm. um, and get popular 
are negative. That's, right. just, That's the challenge. Yes. That's the challenge. Yes. I will say in the last several years, um, and Charlemagne in that has worked to be more uh, aware. That's very true, and of, I appreciate of, that. Yeah, yeah. That's has, dope, man. He you has know? made that transition. Yeah, and, and I wasn't even personally speaking about Charlemagne in particular. Right, or The Breakfast know? Club. They've yeah, worked on it, that. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it's bigger than that. It's bigger than him. It's bigger than individuals, and it's no beef. It's right. just I want everybody to continue to move forward and, and trying to put out better shit, and, I, and I'm holding myself to that standard, too. Well, and that, which is why I was asking you bo about black consciousness earlier and, and even Fred Hampton is because, you know— these conversations have become cool, mm. right? I'm, you've been paying attention long enough to know, you know, uh, five, six years ago, it wasn't cool to talk <laughs> about activism. It wasn't cool to, you know what I mean? That, those <clears throat> things didn't get traction and didn't bring you ratings and didn't get shared and go viral. It was it was not cool. And and I know from experience because I, I was one of the individuals that have been having conversations for a long time that people be like, ah, oh, he up here preaching again. Ah, this nigga yeah. think he got knowledge. Right. Ah, well, you know what I mean? I lived in that space for a long time. And now people think I'm slandering individuals or making fun of them when I'm like, yo, it's cool now to be conscious. It's cool Look, now you gotta to... You got to speak your truth, man. You, you know, know everybody, Nick, Nick, people ain't going to never really understand, you know, but what the particulars are, especially when you're trying to open up conversation to things that isn't about the fuck shit. We know. Everybody want to see the dirt, and that's okay. That's part of the human condition. I'm just saying, when it comes to us, and as black people, sometimes as a singular unit, you represent a monolith. And so we have to be careful about how we're representing ourselves and each other. Say like, that again we, for the people in the back. I don't think they caught that. Yeah, I'm saying that it, yeah, as a black person, sometimes as a singular unit, you, rep you represent a monolith and things that are bigger than you. So we do got a responsibility. Just like we got to wake up and make sure we don't get shot in the streets, we got to wake up and make sure we ain't dogging each other and talking shit about each that's other right. bad and unnecessarily. You know what I mean? So that's and all add, I'm saying. Add layer to that, that to your point that you made earlier, and a lot of those situations are with people of color propped in front but the money that's being made on those stories, which are hurting the community, those are not black faces well, that are making the money were, on that content. That's why yeah. people that were so upset. Going to Media. That's why people were so upset with Gail, is what he's talking about. Mm. Yeah, but, but that's why. That's the yes, basis. You're right. Of you're right. That's the Gail, basis of it. Because Gail works for a network. And well, not it's, only it's, that, but they feel like, look, you know, the Kobe Bryant story as it, it's it's <clears> it's ended. This man, while he overcame something and w and had an allegation that got dropped and all these things, why are we still talking about this one instance in this man's whole life legacy? And why is this thing being, you know, continually brought up like you're trying to harm him and harm also his legacy? Also, it's just like the people, the collective consciousness, as it it concerns itself with things that are better for it, it'll choose better and do better. You know what I mean? And like. So the people, as we like, start to want to be involved in more fruitful shit that's more meaningful to us, we will demand that the people putting shit out are going to put out the type of things that are with our frequency. So it's really on us, you know. It's democracy type though. Uh, what What was it? Uh, you know, because having that desire to want to learn that and have that having the desire to want to put in that work on a daily basis, right? Is something that is either taught to you or something causes you to know that's a, a healthier path. Mm. For your mentality and your spirituality, what got you there? I'm tired, bro. I'm tired. Yeah. It's a heavy thought walking around, you know, feeling judged by, you know, things that are often self-created or, or influenced by things that are outside of your control. And so you got to start with yourself. You get tired of the bullshit, you know. And sometimes when you express on a public platform, it can affect people, but... The point is not to dog nobody out. The point is not to, and yeah, have fun with the little shit once he start talking, you know, use the traction. And that's okay, too, to have fun. But it really ain't about nothing personal and, and, and war and all that bullshit. It's really about all of us fighting for the same thing. And that's for all of us to be able to walk down the street with our head held high. That's it. Um, all right, well, obviously we're spending a lot of time covering important black issues. I, as a Jew, I got to ask one important Jew question. Yeah. Adam Sandler. Jew, no. What was it like? Uh, what was the Sandler experience like with uh, Uncut Gems? Amazing. Uh, Sandler's a beautiful man. Um, just, just a very, very kind person who is so humble and great, and uh, easy to work with, and hard to be mad at. So it was hard for me to yell at him all that time, you know. 
after the premiere, I, you know, I was so close to him. Like when the shit happened, it jumped off, it popped at the end. I was like, yo, you all right? You good? At the end, he's he like, nigga, I was active. I'm like, you know, he didn't say the <laughs> words, but basically. Adam Sandler said the end. No, no, no. He didn't say. Phil said Adam No, he didn't say the words, but yeah, you know, I wanted to comfort him because he's such a beautiful, cool dude. Um, it was, yeah. And I what about KG? K I think the sleeper part of that movie is how good an actor KG was. I thought Killed he really him, right? did a nice job, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was amazing. Came through, showed up, and we were all learning from each other. It was a beautiful experience. Do, would you have any insight on your character in that film? Like, kind of what the logic is of your character? Because it's kind of interesting. Like, in one sense, your character is just trying to get by and find your way. It's also sort of you're also sort of a shifty character, just nah, like Sandler that, that's is a in your real own way. person, man. That is yeah, a real yeah. person in this oh, kind of like celebrity jewel. Yeah, did you did you did you do connect. any research on cats like that or hear about people who have that role? I just hung out at the Diamond District and yeah, I was just facts. seeing how people were moving and shit, and I was like, and it makes sense to me, you know, if that's your job, you're trying to get money, it ain't that hard to understand, you know. You come in. Secure the bag, any means necessary. Fuck all these niggas, like you know what I mean. So I figured that that was his uh, standpoint. So you know, yeah. That's dope, man. And where, do you think there were? Where, did you feel Uncut Gems got snubbed at all in the award season? Uh, you know, I ain't really tripping off the awards. You know, it's kind of awards are for award minded. Um, <laughs> you know, we ain't making <laughs> movies to get awards. We're making them to to, to tell stories, and, and it's nice to be honored, but. That ain't really what we plan for. And if they shout us out, thank you. We appreciate it. If not, we keep it pushing. His name is Lakeith Stanfield, and we appreciate you. He's going to be the sexiest man alive at some point now that he's, you know what I mean? Yeah, actually, Does I your shirt come off in in the photograph? It does. You can see all yeah. my glorious talk on me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The shirt yeah. came off. Shirt Yo, off. listen. John Legend won this. This is in range. You can make this happen. Hey, hey, hey. Look, I'm, I'm going to get in the gym, and I'm going to hit you. <laughs> Yo, go check out the photograph. It's out Valentine's Day, man. Thank you for your Pleasure time. Thank you. Thank Key you. Stands fit.